You've probably seen Eric Berg's video on YouTube's new policy regarding medical misinformation. My followers are freaking out, sending me messages saying, what does this mean for my channel? So is Eric Berg being dramatic in his worries or is he validated? Well, let's take a look at what the policy actually says. So YouTube doesn't allow content that poses a serious risk of egregious harm by spreading medical misinformation that contradicts local health authorities or the World Health Organization guidance about specific health conditions and substances. This policy includes the following categories, prevention misinformation, treatment misinformation, and denial misinformation. So let's start with my first question. Who are the local health authorities? As a physician in care of many patients, am I not the authority for these patients? Well, I am. But as I look for places in my local medical community where I'd like answers, how is someone else solving a similar problem? Well, I look to some leadership at a medical organization or in a company where there's senior physicians who found other ways to solve problems. So are they the medical authorities? Or are medical authorities only the elected positions of the people who no longer usually see patients? I don't think they're the highest level of authority. This part of YouTube's policy is never clarified. And I contend that they'll have a heck of a time trying to answer that because for as many physicians as there are, there will be opinions that should be brought to the marketplace and decided on in a local manner for the target audience that that physician is seeing. So next, what does it mean for the World Health Organization to give guidance? Well, it wasn't too long ago where the World Health Organization had a policy on COVID. One that if you challenged it, you were censored, you were banned, and you were put in the timeout box that you needed to listen to the authorities and ask no questions. I don't think that was the right way to approach that either. So for example, I am a proponent for vaccinations. My kids are all vaccinated. My patients get vaccinated. I vaccinate against the influenza every year. But when I was told to tell patients that the COVID vaccination prevented the spread, I believed them. And now we know that that COVID vaccination improves your own immunity. It is a very powerful tool for that but we don't have the evidence and they have not been able to prove that it stops the spread. The prevention misinformation, for instance, bans the topic of certain substances. Well, some of those are pretty easy to ward off like kerosene or turpentine. And in the world of taking care of patients, that's a pretty easy topic to leave out of my YouTube channel. But what about animal research looking at silver colloids or ivermectin or hydroxychloroquine. That animal research is still teaching us. And what this is saying is I should not talk about it. Let's take a look at this. Content that recommends the use of specific methods for treatment of cancer when those have not been approved by those local health authorities. So let's segue into my story. 2015, my mom has had CLL for over 10 years. And she says, I'm done. Your Western medicine is melting my brain and ruining my life. I want nothing more from it. And her life expectancy was six months or less. Now, I wrote a book about this, Any Way You Can, shows how frustrated I was with her for not listening to me, at the same time wanting to respect her choices. I mean, I've had patients come to me saying, Doc, my neighbor sells acai berry, I have cervical cancer, and I'm going to douche with it until the cancer's gone. And I buried that woman two and a half years later. But you know what that woman was able to do? She got to choose. Now, the goofy woman telling her to do this was not a medical doctor. But there is that right that this woman had to listen to her neighbor. She had a physician telling her what to do too. But I also needed to respect that her choice was hers. And just like when my mom had less than six months to live if nothing was done, I gave her a choice of something that did not have evidence based behind it. There was no evidence that chronic lymphocytic leukemia was going to respond to a ketogenic diet. And where did I learn about that? On a podcast. 
on a place or an open marketplace of two, one very curious person and one advanced scientist who isn't a medical doctor but is very highly respected in his region said, here's what we're seeing in animal models. And that is what we applied to my mother. And I did it in secret because I was afraid to explain it. Is YouTube saying I still have to be afraid of explaining what happened to my mom? So what's the answer? Is Eric Berg being dramatic? Uh, I think so, but I also heed the warning that he's looking at. Now he got a fantastical response from his duct tape and his attention to this new policy. My team and I have debated over whether or not he is being dramatic and we have differences. I would like to keep track. How many of you think dramatic or validated? Show me in the comments below.